To catch the perfect wave, you need to have the right board. Surfboards used to be made of solid wood, and they could weigh 100 pounds or more. But modern surfboards weigh as little as six pounds, and they can be carefully shaped and sanded for maximum performance. That is, if you make them out of the right stuff. At the core of every surfboard is a foam blank like this that can be customized into any type of surfboard. This one is being cut down into a shortboard for an expert surfer. The blank is made of a sturdy plastic called polyurethane that's also used to make skateboard wheels. Except for surfboards, it's made into a foam that's filled with thousands of tiny air pockets. The air pockets keep the board lightweight without hurting its strength. Once the board is the right length, a computer-controlled cutter shaves it down even more to just the right shape. First, it refines what surfers call the rocker, which is the banana-like curve of the board. The flatter the curve, the faster the board, and the harder it is to control. The width of the board also makes a difference, with wider boards being more stable and narrower boards like this one giving you more speed. When the curve and the width are just right, the board flips over and the router shapes the curve on the backside. The final shaping is done by hand, because if too much is sanded away, it will change the dynamics of the board. The most critical sanding is done to the nose, which has to be shaped to a fine point, so it can cut through all types of waves. Then for this shortboard, the tail is sanded into what's called a squash tail, that's slightly square. This tail shape gives the board more speed and allows for quick, pivotal turns. When the board is fully shaped, it's ready for the design work, which is all about image rather than performance. A worker outlines the design in masking tape and carefully cuts it out. Then the board is sprayed with water-based acrylic paints. It's the same kind of paint used to paint houses, so you know it's waterproof and tough. After the first color dries, some of the masking is peeled away, and a second color goes on. Then, more masking is removed, and a worker carefully airbrushes in some yellow to complete the design. Then, the board gets its fins. A template sits on the tail, so a drill can carve out the spots where the fins are glued on with a waterproof resin. The fins act like a boat rudder and guide the board. Finally, to keep the foam board from breaking apart in the waves, the whole thing is strengthened with several layers of resin-soaked fiberglass cloth. The fiberglass cloth is made up of tiny strands of glass that are tightly woven together like cotton or wool fibers to make them super strong. The bond between the cloth and the board is made permanent with a UV light that dries and solidifies the resin and the cloth into a rock-hard finish. But before this board hits the waves, a final hot coat of resin and wax pours over the board to smooth out the finish and give the board a final waterproof seal. A fine grain sander gives the board a final polish 
and it's ready to catch the next wave.